a minute and then start a new movie. There we go. All right, so self-service password reset is very, very popular. Uh, it saves on IT resources. One of the most common trouble tickets, oh, I forgot my password, allows users to register and they'd be able to reset their passwords in the cloud without the need for the IT department. Uh, there could be some licensing requirements depending. If you want them to reset their password and have it right back to on-premises, you're probably gonna need the P2 or P1 license to do that. I don't remember which one. And you're going to want to make sure that they that they have uh, capabilities to use the authentication mechanisms that you decide to implement for self-service password reset. For self-service password reset implementation, I'm going to come over here to my uh, identity governance section. See, is that where I want to go? No. Uh, sorry. I'm going to go to settings here. Well, let me go back up here. I apologize. Identity. And I want to come down here to uh, settings. Nope, that's not where I want. Oh, protection. So I told you guys I would forget where stuff is. Uh, there it is. Under, under protection, password reset. So for self-service password reset, you can either set it to none, so nobody can do it, selected, which means certain people can do it, that you select, or all. And uh, this is uh, important. These settings apply to end users in your organization. Admins are always enabled for self-service password reset. So even if I say none, admins can do it and they have to use two authentication methods. And then there's a, a, a link about an article about that. So if I'm setting up self-service password reset, I have two main uh, Windows, once I decide to, to set that up for users, registration and authentication methods. If I click on registration, uh, this is where I have whether I want to require users to register when signing in. And if I click that to yes, I have it to no right now, but if I click it to yes, they're going to have to register and then they're going to have to, uh, to manually choose how they want to go through resetting their password. And that will adhere to these authentication method settings. So how many methods are required to reset? Well, right now in this environment, I have one, but I could set two. So going back to the enabled and enforced question earlier, while this is a slightly different topic, this is where you could say, well, I'm, I'm enabling multiple authentication methods and I'm enforcing for self-service password reset uh, to see what it looks like. Okay, Thomas, I started Enter ID Connect just to see how it looks. That's okay, but when you open the app, synchronization is temporarily stopped. You have to close that desktop application. Just do not forget uh, if you open up on remote desktop for a week or so. Thank you. Uh, I think it's Tomas, so I'm sorry if I said Thomas and, and it's Thomas. I'm sorry if I said Tomas and it's Tomas. I, 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 I'm just going by the spelling. Uh, that is a great uh, point. One of the awesome things that I do is when I go to admin.microsoft.com, make sure you guys can see me. Okay, open up a new tab, admin. The On my home page, the card that I typically have on my home dashboard is, okay, they've changed my card. No, I want the dashboard view. They just they just reset that I didn't ask it, is this card right here. And I watch this like a hawk. I always want to see those green check marks just in case I do something like Tomas mentioned. That's that. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, so self-service password reset, getting back to the slides. Uh, you have several options, including registration and including the authentication methods, how many you want to have and how many are required. I do recommend that you definitely go back and review this in the documentation uh, so that you have that ability. Hybrid user change or reset with on-premises right back does require P1 or a P2 or Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Those are licenses that support that. For authentication providers, this is letting you know that uh, Administrators don't have to, you could say none and administrators can still use self-service password reset always. So these are things to consider. And uh, 
I kind of already did these already other than that force synchronization. So I wanna do one demo of a force synchronization. So let me get to my demo screen here. And occasionally what happens is, is I'm find myself and I'm on my remote desktop connection and I'm gonna open up uh, uh, my PowerShell, Microsoft uh, PowerShell connection. Sorry, uh, this is my last thing and I'll be done. And if I have uh, Entra ID Connect installed locally, I get a series of commandments and I can do start dash AD sync sync cycle and I can say policy type, and I can either say initial or delta. I, there's another one too that I've never used, unspecified, but I'm gonna say initial. And what that will do is that will actually kick off a brand new job, a brand new full synchronization job. And I have used that uh, in my career many, many, many times, especially when I make a change or something that I have to force that synchronization right away. I want it immediately affected. I'll go ahead and run that to force that to happen. So that's it for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be diving deep into Entra ID, role based access, access control, and Azure Access Control. Very active session. I really appreciate the help with the dash and the letting me know that you couldn't see the names. That's super helpful. Uh, that's it for today. Have a great day. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the next module on role-based access control. Thank you so much. Take care.